Howdy, welcome to another episode of Duck the Law. We are continuing from our last video, and today I'm going to give you 10 tips for filming the police. These tips are things I've learned from a long and involved relationship with the National Lawyers Guild, including uh, being their legal observer trainer, know your rights trainer, being an actual legal observer, and being the vice president of one of the local chapters. I've filmed the police at Occupy Wall Street in New York City and Oakland, California. I was filming at Standing Rock. I filmed at the George Floyd and Stephon Clark protests um, and a hundred other protests, demonstrations, traffic stops, um, a homeless uh, encampment, police raids, and everything else in between. Okay, so let's jump right into it. Tip number one, always park at least a five minute walk away from the place you're gonna be filming. Cops try to identify everyone who's at these protests, and one of the easiest ways they can do that is by running your tags. And this could lead to retaliation, especially if you have warrants out. There's cases of people filming the police who have warrants, they were able to identify the person, and within a couple days, there's cops at their house trying to serve an arrest warrant. A man in Florida recorded a video last year of a Polk County deputy punching a man who was in handcuffs, who allegedly spit at him. The video went viral, and the man who shot it was arrested himself the next day. Authorities say no, no retribution here. I got you. Unique Ocina recorded this arrest outside of his Polk County home and posted it on Facebook. Bro, you hitting this man, bro? That's up. The very next day, deputies showed up at Osina's house. Deputies then came through his front door. I have a warrant for what? For what? Sheriff Judd has denied the arrest was retaliation, but acknowledged deputies ran Osina through the warrant system after he posted the video. See my last video for information on how the cops can legally retaliate against you for filming. Tip number two. Stay a reasonable distance away from the main crowd so you can see everything that's happening. You also won't get caught up in any clashes or, or things that are happening within the main body of the group. You could stay back and, and have your camera on those events. Now, footage taken from within these crowds tends to be really shaky. The view's really narrow. You can't see what's going on. Uh, it's really loud and noisy. People are yelling. It's hard to hear what's happening. So that's why you want to stay uh, a reasonable distance away. And what's reasonable depends on the circumstances. So that's that's different for every situation, but use common sense. Tip number three, be open and obvious that you're filming. Cops tend to act a lot better when they know they're on camera. So don't try to hide it. Don't try to sneak your camera you know somewhere so people don't don't know you're you're filming be up open and and let them know they're on camera and one thing i've done in the past is i had my phone that was dead with me um and uh cops were harassing a guy so i stood to the side with my dead phone pretended i was filming and uh within a few minutes they left tip number four stay focused on filming what you're there to film don't let cops come in front of you or off to the side of you and try to distract you from what you're trying to do. Don't engage with them or let them induce you into conversation or induce you into breaking the law. Say, I don't want to talk. I'm not interfering. Those are the only things you have to say. I don't want to talk. I'm not interfering. Leave me alone. I'm not interfering. I'm not interfering. I'm not interfering. but keep your camera focused on what you're there to film. They are trying to distract you on purpose. Tip number five, if you have to choose between obeying a police order that would allow you to keep fil filming or being arrested, choose to keep filming. What they're trying to do is stop you from filming. 
So don't give them the pleasure of doing that. If you have to step back a few feet or get on a sidewalk or, or do something that would allow you to keep that camera running, that's why you're there. Keep that camera running. The cops don't care about your rights. You might be arrested and your rights aren't going to be decided for days, possibly weeks, until you're in front of a court. By that time, it's already too late. The event's over. Maybe no one else was filming. You were there to film and they arrested you and now that footage doesn't exist. This is especially important if you are the only one there filming because once you leave, once you're arrested, once that footage stops, there's, there's no one else there to document the events. If you are that person, stay that person. That position is very, very important. Tip number six, stay quiet. Only talk when you need to talk, and it should only be things like telling a cop, I'm not interfering. Other than that, um, stay quiet because you also need to record the audio of what's happening. The audio is just as important as the video. It provides context for everything. Uh, and, and if you're yelling at the cop, don't arrest them, don't tase them, don't do this, don't do that. You're a pig. Yelling at cops and trying to shame them does not change the outcome. Cops have no shame. All you're doing is muddling your audio. Tip number seven, don't interfere. And this kind of goes with our last tip, but it's, it's so important and happens so often that it deserves its own number. Don't interfere. Yelling or distracting the cops could be considered interfering. Even if you're not prosecuted for it, you may be arrested for it. If you're there to film, your job is to film and to capture what's happening and yelling at the cops and, and possibly getting arrested uh, defeats the purpose of why you're there in the first place. Plus, again, it muddles your audio. You don't want that. Tip number eight, don't break any laws while you're filming. Jaywalking, blocking a roadway, uh, and, and obstructing and interfering are the most common things I've seen people who are filming get arrested, detained, or cited for while they're trying to film. And as we discussed in the last video, even if it's obvious and even if they admit that they're retaliating against you for filming, and that's the only reason you're being cited, that's perfectly legal in our courts. Tip number nine, do not publish your videos on social media. The cops have whole control rooms full of people monitoring social media, especially during protests. They are logging everything you are saying. They are reporting that information onto the streets. And this isn't paranoia. I, there's documents I have from previous lawsuits that show that they monitor Facebook, they monitor Twitter, they monitor um, the live streams uh, from, from people regular people on the street from news media, and they are writing everything down. They'll say, guy in a red shirt just broke a window, uh, white shirt, red shoes at this location. And from that moment, they're on the alert looking for, for these people. Or if you put on social media that uh, you know a protest is, is turning on this street or that street, they are watching that as well. They will be able to coordinate movements by posting what is happening on the street on a public social media profile where people can find it, what you are doing is giving them intelligence. You're giving them intel that they can use against that protest group. If you do film something substantial, turn it in to your public defender's office so they can get that footage to who, whatever attorney they need to get it to. Because remember, when you post it on social media, if the police find it and they can identify someone in the video, they can and they have and they will use that video to prosecute whoever you caught on camera. Finally, tip number 10, if you are uh, from the press or the media, be sure you're wearing some kind of clothing that says press or media in large letters, whether it be a jacket, a hat, something. You want to be clearly identified when you're out there as press or media. While you are in the role of press or media, you want to act as a neutral observer. That means no chanting, 
no uh, getting into the crowd, no joining in any of the shenanigans that's happening. You're there to film. And it's really important, and I cannot overemphasize the role of the neutral observer at demonstrations and protests. Now, every situation is different, but it's possible that if you are neutral media or you are a legal observer and you're clearly identified, that dispersal orders may not apply to you. So it may grant you extra rights, but talk to an attorney in your state or jurisdiction about what rights apply to you during these demonstrations. It's been my experience that 99% of the time when I film the police, it's relatively peaceful and uneventful. But when you film the police for as long as I have, and as many times as I have, you will eventually run into things. I've been arrested numerous times. Um, I've been tear gassed and pepper balled and I've ran the whole gamut of situations that could happen. So while the possibility of something happening to you is low, it's not nothing. There is always risk. Hey, life's a risk, carna. Now, as always, nothing I've said here is legal advice. You should check the laws of your state and jurisdiction. I know Illinois has some weird wiretapping law. Uh, you might want to figure out how that applies to you. A good resource would probably be your state's ACLU website. Thank you for watching. This channel is just getting started, so if you found any value in it, please click that subscribe button so YouTube will be more inclined to sharing this video with others. Much love and solidarity. Until next time, duck the law.